Welcome everybody to part six. And the plants are growing, they're getting huge now, and they're really hitting their stride. And some of them have formed flowers. And with flowers, it can get a bit tricky. You want to chop most of them off, but you want to keep, in my case, one flower per plant strain that I want to uh, get seed from. And um, so I've got four types. The Havana 142, Habano 2000, Little Dutch, and Criolla 98. So I want to get seed from one of each of those plants. So it means I've got to pick one flower to keep, put a bag over it, so that you don't get cross-pollination between the flowers because that will end up giving you hybrid seed, which will then ruin your strains. And if you think about it this way, each plant has been developed um, with certain characteristics in mind. So the Habana 2000 makes a good wrapper. Now, if you end up with a hybrid between that and Little Dutch, you will have leaves that are not going to be as elastic or suited for, for wrapper making. So, um, so that's why you don't want any cross-pollination. And also, the plants have been bred the way they are with specific disease resistance in mind. So um, I'm not sure exactly what their disease resistances are, but it will be against something like blue mold, um, mosaic virus, black shank, etc. And again, if you end up with hybrid seeds, the genetics between the two strains are then mixed and that disease resistance might be stripped away. You don't know. You don't know. You won't have any way of knowing. So you just don't want your seeds to be mixed at all. You don't want the flowers to be cross-pollinated, which is why you have to bag the flower you wish to keep. And then the rest of the flowers on all the plants, you chop off. You, that's what we call topping. You top it off the plant and uh, the plant will then start pushing suckers. So each junction between the leaf and the stalk, there's normally a little growth bud there, it will push suckers left, right and center. Uh, some plants more than others, but obviously the plant wishes to make a flower. It wants to self-propagate itself. It's, it's a drive that most biological organisms have on this planet, the urge to procreate. So you chop off a flower, it'll push out suckers, and you've got to keep chopping those suckers off. You can't let those suckers become side branches, because each one will end up with little leaves and a bunch of flowers in the head, and you could end up with an entire bush of just thin little branches, small leaves, lots of flowers. That's not what you want. You want to chop those flowers off, get the, um, the nutrients and the energy that would have gone into the flower into the leaves instead. So what I've done is I've, I'm picking the flowers on the biggest of my plants, the ones that are already big with nice impressive leaves, I'll keep those flowers. Obviously if I chop those flowers off, the leaves would get even bigger, but they are the biggest that I've got anyway, so I may as well keep those flowers. And then the smaller plants, if I chop their flowers off, it will encourage those plants to then become a bit bigger, the leaves to become a bit more wider, etc. So, so that's the plan. But um, before we get into the tobacco as such, let me show you this quickly. This is a very old cigar mold. That's a very fine piece of woodwork right there, and this thing is quite old. I have no idea of the exact date, but it could be close to, or maybe as much as 100 years old. It was bought as an antique around 30 years ago, I think. And it was brought over to us from a family member in Holland. They brought it over and they gave it to my mother as a gift. So it takes, there's 20 holes in there. And I've been having a look at what the, the ring gauge would be. Um, I've got some of these cigars that my brother brought over from Brazil. Let me just show you the band quickly. If you can see that. Monte Pascal, Brazil, 2007. These are very, very pleasant to smoke, I must say. I am enjoying them. Just uh, some nice, smooth tobacco with cedar, woodsy notes, with a touch of sweetness. So I'm, I'm guessing that these are roughly about that size. I mean, you, you can't quite poke them in, but you would bunch up your filler and it would just be the binders on there before it goes into the mold. So it might be slightly smaller than, than this size. The length is about right. So the cigars that come out of something like this will be roughly this size. Might be slightly smaller. And these ones are... Put that 
down. Here's the box. Minutos, 20 minutos, 4 by 3 eighths by 42. So the ring gauge of these ones is 42. So 42, 42 64 64 being, if you have ring gauge 64, that's an inch. So an inch, 25.4 millimeters. So you divide 64 by 25.4 and you multiply that by 42 and you end up with about 16 point something millimeters. And that's, that looks about right. So 42 ring gauge. So I'm gonna give this a go when I have some uh, leaves to roll with. So there we go. All right, on with the show. Let's get to the backy. See, during the day, the plant's leaves are a little bit more open to catch the sun. You can clearly see the growth point there. You can see there's a flower just starting to develop. And that's the same plant at night. Notice how the leaves are folded up. So the growth point is hidden right there in the middle. Well, we just had a very good thunderstorm a few minutes ago. For the last hour or so, everything is nice and wet. Lightning, thunder, lots of rain, and now it seems to be over. So I had a quick look in the backy patch, and this is what I found. A green grasshopper has been munching holes in my leaves. I found him on here and I squished him without thinking to grab my phone to show you guys. But I can show you the damage. The little shit. This is how you take, you turn rapid leaf and you turn it into filler. Maybe a binder, but with those holes, it'll never be a wrapper, that's for sure. That's unfortunate. All right, let's have a look at some of the differences that we can see between the different plant types. A little Dutch is very easy. Long, narrow leaves. Havana. The leaves are quite wide and they're spade shaped. They sort of come to a point uh, with a very straight line, almost sort of triangular. Makes a nice triangular point with straight edges. Not really an individual point, the leaves just sort of come together in two straight lines to form a point. If we have a look at uh, Habano 2000, also spade shaped leaves but they kind of come into a sharper point. The point is sort of separate. Here's a good example. They don't come in as straight as a Havana. They sort of swell out spade shaped, but then they come in and then they sort of curve into a, to a point. That's the difference that I can see. Otherwise they're very similar. And then Creole 98 is the other one. Now that's also spade shaped leaves point is similar but the edges are very frilly you can see those frilly edges compare that to the to the um, this is a Habano just making sure Habano Habano and same with the uh, Havana I've got two plants next to each other not much frilliness going on there Crayola 98 definitely very frilly very frilly leaves so those are some of the differences that I can see between the plants and the Criollo is also quite uh, sort of bulgy. It's got the uh, texture almost like spinach. It's not flat. Whereas in general, you can see this, if you lay it down flat, it'll be fairly flat. It's got a little bit of bumpiness, but nothing to the same extent as a Criollo 98. So for the bags to go over the flowers, I will be using this. And this is a disposable hospital bed sheet. And it's non-woven. It's not quite see-through. 
And you can see there's hardly any space between fibers, even those little square looking holes are not holes at all. They're just kind of marks from the, the mold that press the fibers together. So I very much doubt that pollen will get through this. So the wind will not be able to move the pollen from flower to flower and cause any cross contamination. And more importantly, no insects will be able to get through this at all. Insects are the main worry. They will cross pollinate between those flowers if you let them. And this should stop them in their tracks. Now this is an enormous sheet. I really don't need that much. So I'm just gonna chop off a few bits and make four little bags for the four flowers that I want to keep in order to get some seed from my current crop. Okay, I'm going by about 35 by, it's about 28 centimeters. That's just under 14 inches by about 11 point something inches. This is plenty big, this is bigger, bigger than I need probably. Um, I don't remember exactly how big those flower clusters got, so I'd rather give them a little bit of extra room than have too little room. I want those flowers to develop nicely, uh, give them enough freedom to turn into delightful little pods full of seed that I can then use for next season. So all I'm going to do now is put a nice wide layer of glue on the inside and just glue that closed there and glue it closed there. And once that's done, that'll be that. Then I'll just pop it over the flowers, tie it onto the string nice and tight. Um, if you're worried about the quality of the glue, that's why I, I give it a nice wide strip full of glue. Um, you can always fold it over again and then stitch it as well. Put a few stitches through there just to make it absolutely sure if you want to. Um, because the last thing you want is your bag coming apart. So, yep, yeah, I'll glue it up and we'll see how it looks. All right, my bags are all glued up. Just bear in mind if you're using something similar, the stuff is like very thin paper and the glue goes right through. So I made quite a mess on the table. Uh, it took me a while to clean it up. Uh, one thing that really helps, which is which might be might seem surprising, is sun cream. If you ever have a glass a glass jar and you peel the label off and you have that irritating sticky gummy residue underneath, you just can't clean off. Just use some just regular sunscreen. Give it a few squirts. There's something in the formula that breaks up those sticky bonds and it just makes it easier to, to peel the stuff off. You can just scrape it off with a paper towel. If you leave it long enough, it'll just wipe off eventually. So there we go, table's nice and clean again. I'm quite happy with these bags. They seem plenty strong. I've been trying to force my fingers through the side sides that are glued up and it's not giving, so it's quite tough. Now what you do need to look out for is the corners. So this bag, yes, there's a little gap there. So just make sure you catch all those gaps. I'm gonna stick another chunk of glue in there and just make sure that's nice and solid. <coughs> and there we go. And we'll use these to bag up the flowers. Okay, so that one over there is a little Dutch. That one's got a bag on the flower. This one is Havana 142. I've got a bag on his flower. I need one for the Corella 98, but I haven't seen any flowers yet. Um, and for the Habana 2000, I also haven't seen any yet, but I have seen a couple of flowers for a little Dutch and Havana, which we've already bagged, so I want to get rid of all the other remaining flowers. So I'm going to top them quickly. Wow, the audio in the garden was terrible, thanks to the wind. Uh, my apologies. 
I will need some better recording equipment at some point and one of those nice little microphones to clip onto your shirt. I also don't speak very clearly sometimes. This comes from Holland, as in the Netherlands, from a cigar factory way back in the day. In case you didn't catch it earlier. Slam it down. Make the camera rock a bit. There we go. Thank you very much for watching. Um, stay safe, stay smoking, and I will catch you in the next video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I do need some more subscribers for my channel. I want to grow my channel nice and big, and I can only do that if you actually subscribe. So, please consider doing so. I will catch you guys in the next video. Cheerio.